Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Next Door NetAdmit. Have you ever thought a much about Secure Boot? I would bet that if you have, you've mostly thought, yeah, that's a Windows thing. That's, that's a Microsoft thing that they've been pushing for a while. It's not, but certainly Windows has the most support for it largely because Microsoft's keys are baked into most standard rollouts of Secure Boot. Where does that leave Linux? Because this time we're looking at this from a Linux point of view. Secure Boot still has a very, very good reason to exist. Fundamentally, it's just about making sure that all of your boot files and kernel modules are signed by a known entity so that the security of them has been attested to. And that way you don't get random malware modules that are slipping into your kernel through whatever attack and then compromising your boot path and your kernel integrity. That's the idea, paraphrased loosely. Cool, but what open source keys come baked into secure boot. For the most part, there are none. Most people are going to rely on Microsoft's keys and or hope that maybe they're using a shim that is signed by Microsoft. Canonical has a shim, certainly, that they use with Ubuntu. Um, I think it's actually a project of its own called shim. But Canonical uses it with Ubuntu so that you can actually boot Linux either on desktop or on server within secure boot. Cool. What happens if you want to roll your own? What happens for that matter if you have a need of running some other kernel module that is being dynamically compiled in using DKMS, for example? What do you do then? Secure Boot has functionality to allow for an MOK, a machine owner key. It comes built in with the capability, hey, I own this machine. I should be able to put my own key into Secure Boot so that Secure Boot knows, hey, anything that has been dynamically compiled and signed with the machine owner's key I'm going to let run. It still accomplishes the goal of not allowing untrusted third party modules to be inserted into the system. Anything that's there is either going to be signed by Canonical because it's part of Ubuntu and therefore it'll verify through Shim, which is using Microsoft's keys into secure boot and you've got a secure path, or you compile it yourself and secure boot knows hey this is this has been signed with the mok the machine owner key so it's valid it's good to go M under most circumstances this is kind of supposed to happen transparently you follow the prompts and you you know do what you're told and you're good to go i've just been installing a backup agent, the Datto Linux agent, incidentally, uh, into some Linux machines. And for whatever reason, the process completely failed. I could see that it was failing when it was attempting to generate an MOK because these virtual machines didn't have one before. I solved it by generating an MOK myself and enrolling it. And then once it was already created, the installation process could just go, oh, there's already an MOK, I'll just reuse that. And everything worked perfectly. So today I'm going to show you how you would go about generating an MOK, and then enrolling that into secure boot. Cool? All right. I've actually not even installed Ubuntu yet. Um, because the first thing, if you're going to be using Secure Boot in Linux, you want to make sure that you go into security, it says Secure Boot enabled, great, but you need to switch the template to Microsoft UEFI Certificate Authority. That's one that can cross people up a little bit sometimes if 
they're not familiar with it. Once it's been switched to Microsoft UEFI Security Author Certificate Authority, excuse me, it will work. And so that's what we're going to do. I'm sure this is something that all of you experts are already very familiar with, so I won't take a lot of time explaining what I'm doing. But if you haven't done it before, feel free to follow along. It's, uh, it's not like you can't pause and then get yourself set up and then unpause when you're ready to go. So we're just going to do that. Getting Subiquity loaded up here. <laughs> There we are. Okay, English. Yeah, the keyboard's good. Yeah, we're doing Ubuntu Server. Yeah, I don't really care. There we go. Since this is just a demo machine, I don't need to worry about giving it a static IP or anything like that. Okay, cool. I'm not going to bother with LVM for this demo. Yeah, okay. Demo admin. I'm uh, okay. Whoops. Keep forgetting you can only do lowercase uh, for your host name. Demo admin. Oh, we're not doing Ubuntu Pro. Yes, we're doing OpenSSH. Why not? I mean, I'm just going to be doing it through the console. So technically speaking, I don't even need OpenSSH, but force of habit, I always install it anyway. <clears throat> Excuse me. This doesn't take too long, fortunately. Neither does installing an MOK if you know what you're doing. Broadly speaking, the MOK is just a certificate with particular usage values encoded in it. Once you create the MOK, it actually lives on your disk. It doesn't go anywhere. It's just been enrolled into secure boot. Cool. But then the private key and the public key both remain on disk. You might say, well, isn't this a bit of a security risk? What if some hacker gets in there and compromises the key? They can just sign their own module with the MOK and you haven't gained anything. To some extent, yes, that's true. But the MOK is only accessible by root. So if somebody's already on your system and they've got root access, Game's over. Doesn't matter whether they have the MOK or not. If they've got root, they've got everything. So it was judged that this is not a big problem. And leaving it on disk means that dynamic processes like DKMS can just access it anytime you update the module and recompile it. It'll just re-sign it and you're, you're good. Of course, there's nothing saying that you have to do that. You could just as easily remove it from disk and only put it back when you know you're installing something that will actually need the MOK. So you there's lots of things that you can do, but leaving it on the disk is not supposed to be a security risk, at least not more than you would be exposed to by having somebody else get root on your system anyway. All right here, what are we doing? Every now and then we've got the, there we go, okay. Every now and then when I restart a machine in Hyper-V, at least when connected to it by remote desktop, it just doesn't load the screen. So you just close it and reopen it again. Okay, cool. Just for funsies, let's make sure we're doing our proper update of all the packages because that really shouldn't take very long. Let's even just do a kernel upgrade too. We're going to demonstrate actually <laughs> doing something that will affect the kernel. Let's just make sure we get a full kernel upgrade. Like I said, it doesn't take very long. Woot. 
the tools to generate and work with an MOK are already built into Ubuntu. So it's not like you even need to install any extra packages. Everything you need is built in. You just need to know the correct commands, which being entirely honest, I think I remember the, the right commands and we're going to find out really quick if I do <laughs> or if I don't. All righty. So let us... You should do this with all pseudo commands. I'm going to cheat, uh, as I often do, for demonstrations by just elevating myself to root and leaving myself there. All right, so if I do ls lah, uh, this should be in var lib shim signed mok. And there's nothing there because we haven't created an mok yet. We have just installed a brand new system all right so i believe what we want here is update secure boot policy new key yep there we go and now it's generated an mok if we ls that directory again you can see you now have an mok.dir <laughs> which is your binary encoded uh public certificate You've got mok.priv, which is the private key for that certificate, and you've got a .rnd file. Okay, cool. Wasn't that simple? Yes, we've created an mok. We haven't enrolled it yet. There's supposed to be a command under update secure boot policy that will enroll the key. But for whatever reason, I haven't seemed to be able to get it to work don't know why. So instead, you can use a different tool, mock util, mok util, utility, I suppose I should say, uh, import, and I'm going to give it varlib, shim signed, mok, mok, whoops, there we go, mok dot dir. This is the one that I want to import. There we go. Now, it says input password. What password is it asking for? When you're enrolling an MOK into Secure Boot, it doesn't want to accept any random certificate that it's been fed, because if it is an attacker on the system creating their own MOK, well, that's not cool. So the process that it's going to go through is it's going to ask for a password that you are going to set. Then we have to reboot the virtual machine. When we reboot, we'll actually reboot into MOK Manager. MOK Manager will ask for that password again to verify that the password that was entered from the live system is the same password being entered at the console during boot when there's no remote access to the machine. If it's correct, then it will enroll the certificate and then it will actually have the MOK installed after that. So the password that it's asking for here is essentially a one-time password. It's only going to be used to enroll the MOK, and then it'll go away. So this can really be anything so long as you remember it when you reboot your virtual machine. And then it'll ask you to confirm it. There we go. It says nothing. It's just input password and then input password again. Okay. But from here, now when we reboot, it goes into MOK Manager. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. You can continue the boot. You can enroll a key or a hash from disk. That's fine. But we're just going to say enroll MOK. You have the opportunity here to view the key that you are enrolling. And in this case, as you can see, the issuer is the name of our host, our host name, in this case, MOK demo, secure boot module signature key. It doesn't hurt to make sure that this is what you actually expect it to be. This is from this machine. The valid not before is when I created it. 
valid not after is 100 years in the future, it's not going to be an issue. <laughs> we really hope it's not going to be an issue. And that, that looks good. So then you go continue, enroll the key. Yes, password. This is the password that you uh, set when enrolling it. There we go. It doesn't say whether it succeeded or failed, but you can see that it's just reboot. Now, if re we reboot, we're going to go back to our regular system and we'll be able to verify that the MOK is actually installed. All right. We're going back in here again. There we are. Then I'm going to sudo mock util and I am going to test key barlib shim signed. Hello, shim signed. There we go. Okay, dot dir. And what it should tell us, there we go. Now it says it's already enrolled, you're good. If it wasn't enrolled, that would be a problem. Now that MOK is on disk, if you install any sort of module, whether that's a video module or a backup agent module or anything else that you need a kernel module for, DKMS will use that MOK and sign it so that it just loads properly under secure boot and you're good. You can also use that key yourself. If you're compiling a module on your own, you can just use that key to sign the module. But that's out of scope for what I'm showing you today. I'm just showing you how to create the MOK and enroll it and what that process looks like. And you can do it in Hyper-V. You can do this for your virtual machines. That's not a problem. You can also do it on physical machines. The system is pretty flexible that way. And it allows you to get the benefits of secure boot and still have the freedom to roll your own. Compile your own system. Compile your own modules. Go for it. It works. <laughs> so hopefully you found that interesting, enlightening, useful. I could hope for all of those things. If you have any other thoughts on things that you'd like to see me talk about or explain, or if you have suggestions on other things that you can do with an MOK or in general, feel free to let me know right down in the comments section. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I am your next door net admin, and we will see you next time.